All right, in this example, we see polyatomic ions, okay? And the thing with polyatomic ions is, if they are the only source of that element in the compound or in the equation, then keep them together as a group. It's one less thing that you have to try and balance. So because carbon only exists in the form of carbonate on the left and the right side of the equation, we're going to keep it together. Same thing for phosphorus. Phosphorus is only found as a part of the phosphate ion, so we're going to keep it together. So our inventory is going to be uh, lithium, carbonate, magnesium, and phosphate. Okay? So lithiums, two on the left, three on the right. Going to need some work. Carbonates. Now be careful. All right, the three is a part of carbonate's formula. That's what carbonate is. So this does not mean that we have three carbonates. Remember, with polyatomic ions, if there's no parentheses, that means you only have one of them. So we've got one carbonate on the left. And on the right, likewise, we only have one. Magnesium's three on the left, one on the right. Phosphates, here we do have parentheses. So we've got two on the left. And on the right, no parentheses, so only one. Carbonates are balanced, so we're not going to start there. All right, let's start with lithiums. Two on the left, three on the right. Okay, think even odd combination. All right, there's no whole number we can put in front of Li2CO3 that's going to give us three lithiums. So think least common multiple. Least common multiple of two and three is six. So if I want to end up with six lithiums on each side, this needs to be a three, and this needs to be a two. Okay, so let's update our inventory. Now we've got six lithiums on the left and three carbonates on the left. The two is going to change our lithiums to six, but also the phosphates to two. Okay, so notice that brought our phosphate into balance without specifically trying to balance it. Right? Working methodically can help you to do that. All that's left is the magnesium and the carbonate. And it really doesn't matter which one you choose. If you choose magnesium, three on the left, one on the right. So we need a three in front of MgCO3, which changes the magnesium to three. But it also changes our carbonate count to three. And now everything's balanced. So the tip here is, if you see polyatomic ions present in your compounds, check and see if they are in identical forms on both sides. If so, balance them as a single unit. All right, last example here, spotlight to the last tip that was talked about, and that's whenever you're dealing with water and you also see hydroxide in the formula. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. I'll, I'll point out why it would or wouldn't work. Okay? Now, when we think about water, remember that water is that bent geometry with oxygen situated in the middle. Okay? And so an alternate way that we can think of water is as writing it as HOH. Okay? Same thing. HOH and H2O. Same thing. Why would we want to do that? By writing it in that form, it gives us a means by which we could say, all right, I've got hydroxide on the product side to match the hydroxide that's on the reactant side. So just like the last example, we can balance it as a polyatomic ion. Okay? Now, here's the catch. The only way you can do that is if you have something on the other side that can balance the freestanding hydrogen. In this case, we have that. So we can do this. Okay? So we're going to inventory hydrogens, chlorines, calciums, and hydroxide. Okay? For the sake of example, if we didn't have a freestanding hydrogen over here to balance that with, then we couldn't treat water as HOH. We'd have to split it into hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms and we would have to split the hydroxide into oxygens and hydrogens, just so you know. Okay? So, taking our inventory, one hydrogen on the left, only one, make sure you're using the HOH formula, only one freestanding hydrogen on the right. Chlorines, one on the left, two on the right. One calcium on the left, one on the right. Hydroxides, we've got two on the left and only one on the right. Okay, so let's start with chlorine. If we've got one on the left and two on the right, that means we're going to need two HCLs. That's going to update our hydrogens to two, our chlorines to two, balances those. Let's 
fix the hydrogen that was just upset. So two freestanding hydrogens. Over here we only have one, so that means we're going to need a two in front of the water, which is going to give us two freestanding hydrogens, but also two hydroxides. And there again, it finished balancing itself right, without us having to specifically focus on the hydroxide. And that's because we did it in a very methodical manner and we balanced one and let it, it led right into the next one and it daisy chained its way all through.